Welcome everybody to the Freelance Teacher video cast podcast. Um, here in Chile, section of the Bronx, mid thirties, we keep getting told that we're going to be getting warm weather, but no, it's cold. It's actually mid thirties, which feels balmy. It was in the twenties and the teens, so I keep waiting for the warming weather that. Uh, since the mid-80s has been promised, and we are not getting it, so I guess we've got to wait a little bit longer. But uh, let me adjust this a little bit so you guys can see me better. Excellent, that's much better. Um, I want to talk to you about BitChute. The reason why I'm calling this and focusing on BitChute and calling it, I'm going to call it something like how you can tell that the establishment is losing. Or I might title this how you can tell when something is winning. And that doesn't quite work either. Maybe I'll come up with the title as we talk about it, but BitChute is something that needs to be talked about, especially to the young people, because we've talked about platforms, we've talked about censorship, we've talked about videos, we've talked about unauthorized opinions. We've talked about a lot of things in class and also in this, in the, in the channel, in, in YouTube, I also have mirrored the last eighty or so videos that are on my YouTube channel on BitChute, because I don't know if I'm going to get taken off of YouTube. I doubt it. I'm a very small fish, but my opinions are not mainstream opinions. My, actually, let me rephrase that. My opinions are not the opinions of the military-industrial complex or big government, or progressives, or uh, what in America here we would call liberals. My, v- my views don't jive with those people. Uh, for the main thing, I am anti-war. And if you ask a self-described liberal in the United States if they're anti-war, they'll say they are anti-war too. But they actually aren't. If you'll remember, between Barack Obama's inauguration in January 2009 and Donald Trump's inauguration in January 2017, those people didn't have any problems with an increase in war and thousands of bombs killing black and brown people in Africa and the Middle East. They had no problems with it, which means they're not anti-war or anti-violence. They're just against that when it's not their team in power, or the nonsense video box, aka television, is telling them that everything is okay. So you get my point on this. We've talked about this kind of thing before, and it gives you a lens into what people are actually like and their principles. But bit shoot is important to talk about because a couple of things are going on. One of them is bit shoot is an open source kind of a torrent sourced video hosting site. It also doesn't censor. And so the reaction, as I've told you many times, it is the reaction that teaches you a lot. The reaction to BitChute is fascinating. Um, And what got me thinking about this was I had a visitor today, a, a young woman who is in college now and she writes, she's written at least two books and she is the, the daughter of a judge, and she's very much into justice. When she was in high school, she was very much into social justice and racial justice. And what I liked about her was that she would think on her own. And what we talked about today that she has recognized that makes her different is that she wants to know even things that don't mesh with majority opinion. She wants to know things that don't even dovetail with her own opinion. And what, what, how this came up was she's written about Charlottesville, the Charlottesville um, fiasco a couple of years ago with the Unite the Right rally. And she has opinions on it and she'd, she's written about it. And I asked her if she'd read the official report on Charlottesville. And it's called the Hefe Report. And she'd never even heard of it which is not surprising because in the Hefe report, it explains in very exacting detail what went on in Charlottesville. And it wasn't what your news is telling you. 
It was a complicated mess of bad decisions, many of them by government officials, some horrible ones by government officials and law enforcement, and some intentional decisions that were obviously put in place to get people to fight. Decisions put in place to have people battle each other physically, emotionally, verbally, so that the corporate media industrial complex could blame the people they want to blame. In this case, they are basically going after what would be called your garden variety, white gun-owning conservative. And then they could label them white supremacists and racists. And if you're alt-right, it means that you're a racist bigot and you should be shunned from society and and deplatformed and be fired from your job. Which, if you'll remember, is what they did. They actually took pictures of people and then doxed them. They said, oh, look at this guy. He works at uh, Company X in this state. And they would then go to the company and say, look at this guy. You have a Klan member racist on your staff and you should fire him. You know, if he had children or if he needed money for medical procedures or anything, that didn't matter. They didn't like him. So time to fire that person, according to our corporate media, social justice warrior, progressive type, uh, who's usually on Twitter creating nothing and just screaming all the time. So I asked this young lady, do you want to see the Hefe report? It's, I found it via PDF in about 15 seconds. It's the official report hired by somebody who does not share views. Um, Hefe is a person, H-E-A-P-H-Y. And the Hefe report is the official overview, right? Step back and let it told, please analyze the situation. Tell us what happened, what went down, what went wrong, and how can we fix it? And the Hefe report doesn't say what the press said. And I said, I said to her, look, this young lady visiting who'd written about Charlottesville. And I said, do you want to see it? Because it's going to change your views on what happened at Charlottesville. And remember, the mainstream opinion, the mainstream story is very simple. A bunch of white racists came in and hurt people and then killed that lady. And they're, you know, the Klan and and white supremacy and all this kind of stuff. And so that's a nice, neat, incorrect narrative that the gatekeepers have been using various incidents to propagate. So I said, you know, if you if you look at this and you look at it seriously, it will change your mind. And, and again, it's not going to give her sympathy for the people who went, but it will change your mind if you're a thinking normal person about what actually happened. And you know what she said? She said something that, that I'll remember for a long time. She said, I want to know. And that alone is a difference maker. That alone is instantly vaulting someone, in her case, young woman, into a a field of respect. Because most people, and I said this to her, most people don't want to know. They have their opinions. They're comfortable with them. They've got the bit between their teeth and they're not letting go and nothing will change their mind. That goes for a lot of people. And I've been guilty of that myself. I do not exempt myself from these kinds of things. But I want to know is a vital skill. And you better be ready because you're going to hear things like I did. And I told her I used to be kind of a garden variety, white New York City liberal person. And I looked around and I said, I'm in the public school in the black neighborhood and I see failure all over the place. What do the other people say? And for a while I became a conservative and then a libertarian. And then I don't know what I am now. I'm just kind of all over the map. So wanting to know, A, makes you less afraid because you can actually see what's going on and you're not being poked and prodded by corporate media and always being made afraid. Uh, Weather is coming to get you. The white supremacist is coming to get you. The Klan is out there. 
those Republicans are coming to get you. You know, it, 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 that stuff is just silly. It's just theater, right? The I, I, I heard recently that the um, uh, politics, right? Uh, politics is the entertainment division of the military industrial complex, which I found a very nifty turn of phrase. So she said she wanted to know, and I, I gave her the beginning of the Hefe report, and we had a wonderful conversation. And this young lady is moving on intellectually, and it's fantastic to watch. She's a mature, capable young person, and they're out there. I know young people take a beating these days because so much of the internet and Snapchat and what have you, but the real people are there. So it brings me to bit shoot because I, I explained to her that because, and I explained to her back when she was a senior as well, that, you know, if you have non-mainstream opinions, the last couple of years, particularly platforms, Google, Alphabet, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, Reddit will see to it that you're deplatformed. I've gotten kicked off of Twitter. One of these days I'll show you the screenshot. I, I keep forgetting. So what uh, BitChute is, is open source, unfiltered. It's kind of like YouTube used to be in the old days, in the good old days. And the reaction to BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E, BitChute, uh, the reaction to BitChute is key because there's an article written by some woman on the Daily Dot, and I'll link to it if I remember. All she does in the article is talk about how BitChute is a haven for white supremacists, racists, Holocaust deniers, the Klan, conspiracy theorists. And it's just incredulity the entire time. Oh, can you believe Alex Jones is on BitChute? And look at 72,000 followers. And someone who calls himself Sticks Hexenhammer 666. And he's weird and scary. And look at all these things. I found um, crazy far-right conspiracy theories. The, the entire article is just that. Now, she could have been describing YouTube in 2010. Right, but she lauds, she applauds, she 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 gives it up for YouTube for getting rid of that stuff on its platform, and says BitChute is a, a safe haven for weirdos and conspiracy theorists. Again, she I think she says white supremacist probably between five and ten times, and they're just, it's just buzzword salad as far as the eye can see. I got to remember to link this article. You won't believe it. There is nothing in there other than her horror that people want to know. And people want to know things. People want to know why is there a conspiracy about this topic, of the moon landing, uh, Sandy Hook. Um, uh, what, what's, what are some of the other big ones? Oh, the Las Vegas shooting, which is a story that's disappeared. What... what what, are the, what is going on here? People want to know, and the keepers of the narrative want to hem you into an ever smaller pen. And that's why you're seeing what you're seeing with YouTube and Twitter and these other platforms. And guess who's noticing big shots out there who keep the narrative flowing for us and protect us from those horrible people out there who want to know more than your little idiotic social justice warrior progressive box will provide, guess what? They're noticing. How do I know? Because the other thing that came up today was this young lady who visited me was looking for a video on a topic, and it wasn't even that egregious. It wasn't some kind of bizarre, out-of-left-field conspiracy stuff. And the video was gone. She couldn't find it. And she knew it had been there. She'd used it in the past. Video's gone. And it caught her because, well, she's learning something. She wants to know more. She wants to go back to that video and use it for proof and evidence and as an augmenting her skill as a, as a narrator, as a truth teller, as a thinker. And the corporate, I don't know what to call these people, these corporate narrative 
uh, it really is a narrative. These corporate narrative storytellers who want you, as Tom Woods says, to stay within the three by five card of acceptable opinion, they've gotten rid of it. And she wanted to see that video. And she had remembered that I'd mentioned that, you know, she was in my class 2016, 2017, that I'd, I'd mentioned that the censorship stuff was really ramping up, that they were really starting to censor much more. And she, when she couldn't find the video that she knew how to track it down and she knew where to look and it wasn't there, she thought of that. And so the young people are noticing. So you're going to see places that are censoring even even uh, fundraising sites like Indiegogo or um, Patreon are going the way of are going to go the way of the dinosaur because you've got teenagers and people in their twenties noticing that they can't see what they want to see because they want to know more and you're not letting them. So BitChute is a place where people can put up even the kooky stuff. In the good old days of YouTube, 08, 09, 2010, 2011, you could find whatever you wanted to find. You wanted the most out there story, it was there. You could track it down. And what happened was people were learning too much. The documentary, The Matrix, from the late 1990s, that proverbial red pill where you learn what the world is like and you learn how you're being fooled and tricked and bamboozled. A lot of red pills were gobbled up. I knew I took a bottle. I took a bottle of red pills way too fast. Caused some problems. But I'm over it now. You don't have to worry. But that documentary, The Matrix, was what was happening. People were red pilling themselves. And they were learning that the cabal, the, the grabblers, whatever you want to call them, they were lying to you that they're fake fake news and a a last point on the fake news stuff because i'm kind of rambling here i apologize but the article from the daily dot by i can't remember the lady's name schroeder i think is her last name some shrill sjw type who thinks that you can't handle the stuff that she finds offensive Right, I doubt she even finds it offensive. I'm sure she's been told what to write. Anyway, um, she says that bit shoot and and sites like that are are filled with fake news. Now, this is somebody who would see CNN and the New York Times as the real news, and you go as far back as the early 2000s, and you have the New York Times hiding from American people that their telecom records were being, um stolen, snooped at by big government, right? The New York Times sat on that story for at least a year. Oh, but the New York Times is, that's, that's okay. Or all of the major media outlets saying that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, which he did not. And what the corporate media do? It pushed the narrative because that's what they wanted. Those places, this Schroeder at the Daily Dot, she sees those as legit and bit shoot and open source torrent funded torrent made no censorship place she finds offensive why there's just so much white supremacy there and racism and inform and uncomfortable information on the holocaust and hashtags i don't like I and mean, it's really laughable when you think about it And one thing about wanting to know and taking the red pill and being a person who can handle uncomfortable information, which is most of us, is you learn um, where to look. You learn from reliable sources. One thing that uh, my former student asked was, you know, how do you learn about these things? Because she'd never heard of the Heafy Report. And this is an informed early 20-year-old American woman. And she'd never heard of it. And she's informed. She knows more than the other kids. <laughs> she's, she gets it. But she never heard of it. So, she, so another great question. Where do you go for the good information? Well, you don't go to YouTube. Not anymore. 
You find channels, you find people, you find sources, none of them in corporate media, none. Nothing in corporate media is worth it. They are truly the enemy of the people. Donald Trump was right, and I don't care if it makes you uncomfortable when I say that. They are terrible. And they don't mind it that hundreds of thousands of people were killed in Iraq. And that Fallujah is a white phosphorus death zone with birth defects. They did that. And they don't care. They're upset because, oh, there's white supremacy on BitChute. And, oh my gosh, they talk about, they have, they have these conspiracy theories about the moon and the Holocaust. Oh, OMG. Death of children by the New York Times, peddled by New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, no problem. Someone has an opinion that doesn't fit the narrative. <gasps> we got we to gotta get rid of this. I want you to think about that. Death of kids, uncomfortable opinions about things that, that the narrative keepers don't like. Ah, oh, terrible, terrible. Mm. White supremacy. So, now that you know that people go by their emotions, and you know that the corporate media is a joke, bright, shining light today, visitor came in. Help me prioritize that I, I do have a little bit of an influence on some people, which is a plus. But this young person, this young woman is going to have a, probably a bigger influence than I do. So when you decide to create, write, speak, get your blog out there. It doesn't matter if you get three views on a post or 3,000 views. Say what you have to say. Say it clearly. Don't lie. And have, a, have an effective conversation without the controllers of the narrative. Just you and like-minded people in whichever venue feel is best. That's my message for today. There's no homework. There's no required reading. I just want you to listen and think and analyze and tell the truth as best as you can. Talk to you next time. This has been, uh, I'm Doug Morola, the freelance teacher. And um, I'll see you, see you later.